Seth Wells, breaking news out of East Lansing, Michigan State University head football coach Mel Tucker has been suspended without pay amid a Title IX investigation. This comes after a report broke early this morning from USA Today that shows a rape survivor alleging that Tucker sexually harassed her with unwanted phone sex. MSU Athletic Director Alan Haller announced that Tucker has been suspended without pay in a press conference at Spartan Stadium that wrapped up within the last hour. Spartan Stadium is where we find our News 10's Joey Ellis tonight. Joey, you were in the room when MSU's leadership made the announcement. Yes, Seth, it's been quite the whirlwind here in East Lansing and for a Michigan State Athletic Administration still reeling from the fallout of the Larry Nassar scandal here in East Lansing. Michigan State officials took swift and diligent uh, process here at Spartan Stadium as a athletic director Alan Haller as well as interim president Teresa Woodruff acted swiftly and, and justly in my opinion announcing the suspension Seth as you said of Tucker without pay effective immediately. The university's objective has been and remains focused on conducting a fair thorough and unbiased investigation and, allow, and allowing the processes to play out. This includes protecting confidentiality of the claimant and putting in place interim measures. The university's formal conclusion of the investigation will occur once the hearing and final decision processes are complete. With the best interests of everyone, including student athletes and the university community in mind, I have suspended Mel Tucker without pay as an additional interim measure. While the investigation continues, I made this decision with the support of university leadership. And of course, just to catch you guys up why we're at this point, this all comes on the heels of the earlier mentioned USA Today story, which alleges Tucker was on a phone call in April of last year with Brenda Tracy, who was a well-known sexual assault survivor herself and activist against sexual violence. And the two had been working together to fight against sexual violence. And Tracy alleges during the call, Tucker engaged in non-consensual consensual sexual acts during that phone call. And this report comes just over a day after survivors of disgraced sports doctor Larry Nasser filed a lawsuit against the university for their refusal to release documents that were related to the case. And the original formal hearing for Tucker's investigation was reportedly scheduled for the first week of October, but MSU administration, they took swift action, naming secondary coach Harlan Barnett, the acting interim head coach, as well as former Spartan head coach Mark D'Antonio, associate head coach. And one thing is clear, Tucker's duration of suspension seemingly will be pending Final, pending their final review of the Title IX lawsuit, but Michigan State administration is making one thing clear. This is far from over. I want to reinforce that these matters are unique and complex, and our investigations are designed to be comprehensive and fair. Our guiding principles are equity in process and confidentiality for all involved in order to protect the integrity of the investigation. I want to put a fine point on what A.D. Haller shared just a moment ago. In the MSU of today, when any report comes into the university, it is appropriately and rigorously reviewed. We're always um, evaluating the interim measures were in place, and those interim measures uh, have been updated. Uh, initially, they were no contact uh, with the complainant, and then also increased oversight uh, from me uh, of the program, but then also the coach. So I want to emphasize again, this investigation is not complete. And obviously the football still has to go on as Michigan State readies for number eight Washington on Saturday. But Harlan Barnett's got plenty of coaching experience, having served a critical role on Mark D'Antonio's staff. And as to how D'Antonio finds himself back on the campus of East Lansing, Alan Haller reached out to him this morning and Mark said, Alan, whatever you need me to do, I will be here to do it. So Michigan State is certainly in capable and experienced hands to lead this football program, Seth and Tim. But one thing is for certain, as I said, this story with Mel Tucker certainly not going away anytime soon. It'll be certainly something to keep an eye on throughout the coming weeks and throughout the duration of this season. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, Joey, indeed, I'm joined now by Tim Stout. And Tim, we, we talked about it a little bit earlier when we aired the press conference live on our air. but. What does this do to the student athletes? You know, you, you, you're, you're in the middle of your season, you're 2-0, and and you, you lose your head coach who's been suspended without pay, and now you have your old former head coach for some of these players and uh, Harlan Barnett as 
acting head coach. What does that do to the players? In that well, situation? my sense is Mark D'Antonio's role is not going to be to change the X's and O's. All that would get is resentment from the staff that's there that, has, that works with Mel. My sense is he's coming in to calm these players down. When when Allen said, with all due respect, that the players were enthusiastic hearing about D'Antonio, I don't buy that for a second. They're they're discouraged because they lost their head coach. Mel Tucker recruited these guys. Okay, that's just that's not, that, that's just the way it is. How they respond moving forward, I think D'Antonio was brought in to be a calming voice. Harlan Barnett, I understand, because he's been there for a very long time. The players know him well. He's, he's in time. Where I think the questions are going to come was when Alan Haller said, I got the report July 25th, but the hearing for him is not until October. So people are going to say, well, then why wasn't his hearing coming up very soon after that, perhaps prior to the start of pre-fall practice, so that we can make a decision on his status then? And my sense is the Big Ten media days were then. Michigan had its own issues at Big Ten media day with Harbaugh. What are we going to do? Have this guy suspended as he goes to Big Ten media day? But that's still going to come up as a question. Why October 5th and 6th, which is their bye week? I don't understand why he is being suspended without pay. I would think if he's innocent until proven guilty, he's suspended with pay pending the investigation, and it was not made clear why he was suspended without pay one way or the other. But I think the timing of this is going to be an issue moving forward. Look, let's, let's, let's tell it like it is. He's not coming back as head coach. That is not going to happen. The big issue moving forward with the university, let's cover every legal base that we have so that there's not going to be an issue of due process. We're going to give him all the due process and his contract clearly states that if he violates it in the way he's been charged now, the university has $77 million left to pay him if he, uh, if he goes through his contract, right? right? And is fired for losing games, not for moral problems that he's got that are charged against him now. The issue moving forward, in my opinion, is not always hearing about the $95 million. It'll be the $77 million still owed him. And how is that going to be resolved? Yeah, how is that going to be resolved? It'll be something we keep our eye on. We also, one of the questions at the press conference that did come up is you had the final report July 25th, why not suspend him then? And you kind of mentioned that. And uh, Alan Haller in the press conference did respond to that question, saying there were still processes that needed to be played out despite the fact that the full report was already in at I, that point. I think one of Tucker's problems is the complainant is credible. I mean, her background is sexual abuse issues, so that's going to be an issue right there. And then will anyone else come forward? All of the Nassar issue, all of the issues at the University of Michigan or Ohio State, Penn State, does anybody else come forward and make it more complicated than it already is now? The one thing is certain is this story is not going to go away anytime soon. No, it's not going away. And I think the other thing is in that report, even if you believe you know, Tucker 100 percent, let's say you believe Tucker 100 percent, at that point, is he fit to lead a bunch of college men? And, uh, you know, I think that's a question that Alan Haller and interim president Teresa Woodruff are going to have to ask themselves as well. So we learned a lot in that press conference. The team, we want to thank you for your insight as well. Right now, we're going to send it over to Justin, who's going to give you a look at your Sunday.